Thank you all for tuning in. We're going to get to all those games. Uh, we're going to get to our, our reactions on all those games. We're going to re-rank the top 25 today. Um, but first, I want to get into a piece of news that we've uncovered this morning because we're not going to really go over the Texas A&M score because I, I think that's pretty irrelevant uh, considering the news that we got this morning um, that it, it looks as though Texas A&M is prepared to move away from Jimbo Fisher um, either immediately or um, I guess maybe at the end of the year. Um, so at, at this point, I, I wouldn't understand why they try to keep him through the end of the year. You might as well go with an interim, I would think. But um, ne nevertheless, that's what's being reported right now. Uh, what's your reaction to the Jimbo Fisher news? And um, maybe if you're like me, you're probably a little relieved. I'm, I'm about sick of this uh, so far. Yeah. It's time to move on. Yeah, weirdly, um, I think it's a $76 million buyout, roughly, and it seems like this is going to be a mutually beneficial um, firing. So so Jimbo, you know, runs out with the, with the cash bag, right? He's he's going to be well set. Uh, he, he was already well set, yeah. but but he, he's sitting he's sitting pretty. He, he's doing all right. Um, you know, insert Jimbo's, uh, you know, TV era, I guess. Um, so Jimbo's fine. He's financially going to be okay. Um, and I, I feel like I'm relieved. I feel like Texas A&M should be able to hire a better coach. Um, it, it's interesting to me, you know, going back to what, what Jimbo did and, and I'll, I'll give you a list of his records, um, since he started in 2018 at Texas A&M, but he went, uh, nine and four, eight and five. Nine and one. That was the year they went to the Orange Bowl in in the COVID year in 2020. Eight and four. Last year five and seven. And right now he's six and four. Um, yeah. By Texas A&M standards, that's not good enough. Um, compared to what they did historically, it was a step back from what where uh, what Kevin Sumlin did in his first you know six seasons, uh, five plus seasons, six seasons, and. The thing is that that makes it so significant is not that they took a step back. It's how much they paid to take a step back. You know, that they, they they forked over a, a ton of money. They basically just backed the freaking ATM truck up to his house and and unloaded. And um, it did not amount to anything other than some really good talent. Now he's amassed a, a strong roster from a talent perspective. So can they go out and get a coach that? can can literally step in and and with the right coaching can be in a national championship contention you know in in year one maybe but especially by year two you're you're not going to have a whole lot to do to turn this around it should be a very um sought after position not just from from a financial aspect but from a championship aspect so right. I, i'm anxious to know your thoughts mark and and i'll let you kind of react a little bit more to this but um do you have any any coaches at, at the forefront of your mind as to who they would go after? Well, um, not yet. I mean, look, I, obviously, I think you need to go with somebody regional there that's got um, some kind of footprint in Texas. Uh, obvious, I, I think it's obviously very important for Texas A&M to be able to recruit that area. And, hey, J recruiting wasn't the issue. Jimbo brought in a lot of talent. Now, he had a lot of ta uh, trouble controlling their locker room and and, and mm -hmm. all the personalities that came along with with the five stars and um, I, I think that's one thing that people really don't think about and I think that's really where where Jimbo had most of his issues is um, had a hard time keeping his team's head right. So with all this being said, I mean a forty five and twenty five record is not going to get it. Um, you know. Comp he competed against some of the best teams in the country every year, though, um, and it, it really never amounted to anything, like you said, for Texas A&M. All that investment, um, it, it really didn't amount to anything for them. So it's back to the drawing board. I think you got to find somebody local, man, and I don't know who that is. Um, I'm sure that some candidates are going to become apparent in the coming days. Uh, but for now, um, you know, we got signing day, Mason, in like a month and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, a month, whatever. Yeah. So all, we, all these recruits that they've they've got uh, lined up. I mean, you know, they're all questioning 
coming to Texas A&M at this point. So somebody's got to get in there and do damage control immediately. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be a washout over there.